Let's return to working with a single oscillator to focus on the various types of wavetable synthesis in greater detail. First, there are two more things to go over in single mode. The first is phase. This is the phase switch. It's this small icon, a circle with a line through it. Clicking on it will invert the phase of the sound waves produced by the oscillator. This may come in handy if you have two oscillators producing a similar sound and you're hearing some phasing. Phasing is due to two equal but oppositely timed waves canceling each other out. You can also sometimes use this phase switch to create an interesting dissonant sound between two nearly identical oscillators. It's paired with this button here. Clicking on the word phase will switch between sync phase and free phase. Setting it to read phase will reset the phase of the oscillator with every incoming MIDI note. When the phase sync switch is set to free, the oscillator will not be reset. When only one oscillator is active, and you've only set one voice in its unipanel, the free mode has no effect. The second thing to go over in single mode is the unipanel. The unipanel allows you to implement multi-voicing at the oscillator level. Basically this means you can produce up to 8 copies of the wave playing concurrently. What does this achieve? Well, if you use the transpose dial, you can instantly get a full sound, since you'll be hearing multiple notes evenly spread out over the range you choose. Choosing either 12 or 24 will get you a pleasing sound usually, since the voices will be playing on different octaves of the same note. whereas other values will give you an off-tune, but sometimes desirable sound. Note that this slider will only have an effect if the voices is set to a value higher than 1. Another way to add interest is to use the random transpose slider. It produces a detuning of the voices with every note in the sequence. If you're subtle with it, perhaps with a small number of voices, it can produce the effect of a sloppy or imprecise intonation. This can imitate a stringed instrument playing without tension, or you can use it to give atonal sounds like percussion some natural variation. The unipanel is also available for the double, FM, ring mod, and fractalized modes of the oscillator. Speaking of the double mode, let's take a look at it now. In double mode, you get a pair of oscillators. The two signals of the oscillators are mixed together before the combined signal is sent to the next module. The most practical use of double mode is to create your main oscillator sound in the main panel and then add texture to it using the second oscillator in the mod panel. For example, I could leave the first oscillator set to produce a sine wave and set the second oscillator to produce some noise. I could then find a nice balance between the two using the balance value. I can modify either oscillator at any time. I can also alter the phase of the second oscillator so that the two waves will interact and combine differently giving us a slightly different sound. Next is FM mode. FM stands for Frequency Modulation. Frequency modulation was discovered in the late 1960s by John Chowning of Stanford University in the United States, and the technology achieved great popularity in the 1980s through Yamaha's DX7 synthesizer. In FM mode, the mod oscillator modulates the frequency of the main oscillator. Let's reset our patch to get a clean slate and then set oscillator A back to FM mode. So here's our first oscillator as per usual. And in the mod panel, we have a second oscillator. Instead of the two waves being combined and their amplitudes added or multiplied together, as with the previous modes, FM synthesis will instead multiply the different frequencies within a sound to get a result. For the best results, pick a completely different wave type in the mod panel
and then gradually turn up the FM index slider. You can also adjust the transposition, or pitch, of the modulation oscillator as well as its phase. An interesting effect can be achieved with a very low transposition, and therefore a slow modulation, combined with a very high FM index, which will increase the strength of this effect. The ring modulator mode, or ring mod for short, for the oscillator is pretty similar to the FM mode, except instead of multiplying frequencies, it multiplies amplitudes, i.e. volume information. Listen to the difference in the sound between the ring mod and the FM mode. The FM setting is making the sound pitch up and down rhythmically, while the ring mod is making it pulse in volume. They share essentially the same controls, but just have a different effect. Next is the Fractalize mode. In Fractalize mode, the selected waveform is copied to itself, so you can hear smaller, higher frequency elements of that waveform that are similar in texture to the sound as a whole. Put simply, you can use the Fractalize mode to add overtones to a plain waveform. Its controls are rather simple. First you have a standard oscillator, and in the mod panel you have iterations, amount, and displace values. In mathematics and geometry, a fractal can be loosely defined as a shape that possesses what look like small versions of the larger structure within itself. An easy way to picture a fractal applied to audio waves is to picture a large wave, but one that surface has smaller, identically shaped waves running along its surface, and those smaller waves have waves within them that are smaller yet. These smaller ripples with similar, but smaller characteristics, create what are called overtones. We've heard overtones a few times before, like with our resonance control in the previous chapters, but they were generated in a different way. If this is any way confusing, check out the wave window chapters for a visual idea of how the fractalize function works. These waves within waves, as I mentioned, in terms of absence fractalize mode, can be controlled using the iteration slider. Use the amount slider to actually mix these overtones higher or lower in volume. And the displace value can offset the overtones, creating an interesting distortion effect. A value of 50 is a centered value, so there's no displacement. But you can slide anywhere between 0 and 100 to hear this effect. And then lastly, there is the sync granular mode. This one uses the mod panel to apply its effect. The way it works is as follows. It divides a waveform into the smallest parts, the so-called grains, makes changes to those grains, and then brings the pieces back together. There are two different granular synthesis processes in Absinthe 5, but they differ in what kind of input sound they use. In granular mode, which we'll see more of later, the grains are taken from a sample, while with sync granular mode, you can take your own waveforms or an existing waveform from the library tear it apart, and then put it back together in a new way. As I said before, before putting the grains back together through a process known as resynthesis, you can influence the grains that make up the sound. You can change the frequency of the grains, change the density control value to determine how individual grains overlap, and use the scatter parameter to manipulate the level of diffusion of the grains. These options allow you to create very interesting sounds and, for example, convincingly simulate the blowing sound of a wind instrument such as a pipe or flute. Take some time to experiment with this one. Turning the balance all the way up, and working between the density, scatter, and transpose sliders, you can come up with some really interesting atmospheric sounds almost instantly.
and one thing I like about sync granular mode is that it often doesn't produce that characteristically electronic sound, which is sometimes good to get away from. And lastly in the patch window, let's talk about these edit menus. They're on every single one of these modules, and they can help you save a lot of time. Simply put, the edit menu holds functions for the modules you've clicked on, and some of the functions also apply to the whole channel, A, B, or C. You'll notice that the oscillator modules have a few more options than the others, and this is because oscillators control the whole channel, which is composed of the oscillator itself, as well as its one or two modules below, and the panning and volume controls. The edit menu's entries are grouped into four sections. The first entries allow you to copy the current settings of the module into memory in order to paste them later in another module of the same type. For example, I can copy oscillator A to the B or C slot, or any of these eight filter, modulation, or wave shaper modules between each other. In addition, the edit menus of the oscillators can copy and paste the whole channel. So for example, I can set up an oscillator with its two modulators below, and copy and paste it in place of another set. If you want to store and reload the configuration of a module, choose from the Save or Load Template options. As before, you can save an entire channel as a template using the edit menu from any of the oscillators. And lastly, there are options here to mutate the module or oscillator with the settings of one of the sounds loaded into the browser window's search result list. We're going to cover the mutate functions in Absynth in a later chapter. That does it for the patch window. Stay tuned to learn about effects.